somehow you haven't watched the Halo Infinite campaign overview, stop this video right now, go watch it before you watch this one, come back. And for the rest of you, you've read the title, let's get straight to it. Let's start on a good note. The graphical improvements are incredibly obvious in this trailer. Cube on the screen, side by sides of noticeable stuff, but it's great. I love it. Not everything's been smoothed out. For example, there was a bit of texture flickering on uh, some flowers, but yeah, it's flowers. Who cares? Quote unquote evil Cortana is purple. They decided to color code the two Cortanas, which just makes it easier to understand visually which one's which, because obviously same voice actor. If I had to give a criticism, it's maybe a bit too purple, maybe make it a bit more blue, but you know, nitpicks. Jen Taylor narrates throughout the whole video what's going on, explaining to the player the situation. There's nothing crazy revealed in that. She does say that this is a new era of Halo, which is an understatement really. For example, there are now RPG mechanics within Halo Infinite. We got another look at the map, which showed off kind of more of the objectives. There was now a fob. Yeah, so we got to see similar stuff. It doesn't reveal anything crazy, you know, a description, but there's like some in-game currency type deal for the campaign to then unlock new abilities for Chief. For example, we saw in the trailer when Chief grapples onto enemies, they get stunned, which is an unlock. And there was also when Chief used Thrust to avoid a melee attack, I believe, he then crouched and then performed a ninja, if memory serves correct. And yeah, again, that's that RPG mechanics coming into it where you can now uh, unlock more powerful abilities and just little knickknacks and stuff to go along with your core mechanics that you start with in the game. Which, you know, I'm, I'm eh about, I'm not, I'm not too fast, I don't, I don't care. You know, cool, something new. Something though that I do kind of dislike a lot is you can now, at these strongholds that we've seen previously, you can now call in vehicles. And one of the cool things about Halo, in my opinion, was the fact you had to scavenge your arsenal from the environment from like fallen enemies. Now, obviously, it depends how varied the vehicle selection is. If it's literally all UNSC vehicles in the game, then, you know, why would you ever hijack a Wraith? You literally don't need to engage with the hijack mechanic anymore because you could just go to these strongholds, call in a, a scorpion, and then cross map the wraith. Like, why why, why would you need to do that? And there was a similar looking station to spawn in weapons, which, you know, it means you can now go into an encounter fully stacked out with power weapons. Why would you need to engage with, with the entirety of the sandbox when you could just give yourself the best gear? Good comparison would be, I think that Doom Eternal is more fun than Doom 2016 is because of the extremely low ammo count, it forces the player to use weapons that aren't just the super shotgun. Yeah, so the, these drop pads are now just meaning you, you will never start an engagement on the underfoot in terms of your gear. You always have the upper hand. Obviously, we didn't see in the trailer Chief pulling out a spanker or whatever, but he pulled out a Hornet or a Wasp, you know, one of the two. And yeah, that's a pretty OP vehicle. Like, we see in the trailer this could this could just be because they were recording on easy mode, but it just blitzes in like eight shots or something. A banshee just instant dead, basically didn't do a thing. Which yeah, that's that's busted. Maybe you unlock these vehicles as you go on, but I I don't know. Another thing I noticed, and this is a positive, is you can rescue marines, which is awesome. Cool, harkens back to Halo CE again, the first mission Halo. And yeah, you can rescue marines and they don't have all their armor on. They're kind of in like their jumpsuits or whatever. It's 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 really cool. Just a fun thing I noticed. And they recognize you. They, you know, they do the kind of, hey, that's a Mark V. Going back to Cortana. Yeah, so the new Cortana is portrayed as this more naive and innocent than uh, the Cortana we, we've known throughout the original trilogy and the Reclaimer saga so far. And my initial reaction was like, oh. Yeah, that's cute. And then her snark comments just started to get on my nerves nearing the end, which is kind of a trend for Halo Infinite's AI in the flights. It's like the first three comments are like, oh yeah, that's that's funny. And then you, you get to like the fifth repeated line 
and you're just like, oh my god, please shut up. But we haven't seen the full game. Maybe maybe there's just a bad selection of scenes. Maybe overall she's she's the Cortana we know and love, just a bit naive, and it isn't as irritating. The objectives seem to be a lot more varied than Halo 4 and 5. Halo 4 and 5 were very run, place, push button. And we see that uh, one of the missions you'll be doing is destroying a refinery, a factory of some description, and you're literally shooting some sort of fuel tanks and blowing them up. There are going to be bosses which, you know, Halo hasn't had a good track record with bosses, the exception of Scarabs and how Brute Chieftains in Halo 3, sometimes the encounters were designed kind of like a mini boss fight, which was cool. But apart from that, Halo has done extremely poorly with boss fights. They do, on first glance, just seem like X enemy type, but with bigger health bar. Because, you know, there's a, there's a little health bar above them, which kind of looks out of place somewhat. Yeah, they got like a kind of white shield effect over them, kind of like an overshield. And uh, yeah, but it does look like they have a unique move set which is, is definitely better. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how well they're done. There was also a new faction introduced in the trailer, the Skimmers, and they are seemingly connected to the Harbinger, which we do see in this trailer. She seems to be a prevailing character that perhaps will fight on several occasions and then finally kill. That's just how it seems anyway. They seem to be connected. They kind of r remind me of rejected concept art for the Watcher. Promethium unit and I'm kind of thinking well why didn't you just introduce drones they seem to fulfill the same role but they could have just decided to add them for story reasons which is you know fair enough well they were carrying the shock rifle is it I think one of the new weapons to Halo Infinite some people were confused about its design and you know and what faction it belongs to well now we know it's a completely new faction and then there was also a Spartan hunting elite it was yeah, in black armor with some cool NGs sword stuff. He looked very similar to the action figure we saw a while back. He also seems to be a prevailing character as well. The cinematography also seems great. This God of War style approach to its one continuous shot, which yeah, looks great. The pilot is as funny as ever in Chief. His, oh, I like it line, you know, great. Kind of like the, oh, I know what the ladies like line that Johnson had. And yeah, it just seems a lot more light hearted than the previous two games, which were very serious and dramatic and yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the previous tone the game has established really up until ODST and Reach. Then the franchise got a lot more serious, but this seems a lot more light-hearted in its presentation and hopefully they will have this slightly darker undertone that the series always had with you know the flood and the spartan 2 program and fun things like that armalock also seems to unfortunately be making a return as well there's a couple scenes where the brutes do the armalock pose and their shields look a bit different and seemingly they don't get affected by damage the player does to them so that's something to look out for there was also a brute with a spanker. I think it's neat in Halo 2. There's some levels where brutes are holding UNSC shotguns. There's an argument that was because they ran out of development time in Halo 2, but I don't know. It just seems like it suits the brutes to me. They're just grabbing whatever they can and they're just like, eh, close enough. And uh, yeah, this video has been very scattered brain. I'm recording this literally minutes after the trailer came out. I'm very excited, very interested to see what the future holds. And as always, do all the regular stuff youtubers don't shut up about and hopefully i'll see you in the next video